Well, good morning there, friends. Let's get right to it. We're going to talk politics today. Woohoo! No, I'm not going to actually, uh, I'm not going to get into the political subjects of, you know, the elections or who's running, anything like that. I've already made my point on how I feel about the candidates. They're all basically just numbers that are at the will of the people and the big companies who sponsor them, except for Bernie. But he gets thrown in under the bus with the rest of them. And during this whole process, this election process, as far as watching the debates, I've been watching the issues that come up and really trying to absorb exactly what is happening, not what I think is happening or what I think is right, because I find myself, you know, making statements and claims often that are just things that maybe I've heard repeated too, or maybe something I read before that's not true any longer. And the most important issues that it seems like the country is facing right now, during this election, is, at least in the people's opinion, is uh, the economy, ISIS, and healthcare, and global warming. Now, global warming has been pushed off the table because the GOP wants nothing to do with it. So I'm not going to even get into that aspect because it always opens up a can of worms. Several people have just, you know, they think that all the scientists are in cahoots and that it's a big green conspiracy, but I see it as who really has the money to perpetuate that global warming is a myth? The people with the money. The people with the money are making it off of business as usual. So global warming is an issue, yes, but none of the candidates are going to be able to stop this. In other words, a, pre a president's not going to be able to jump into office and say, oh, okay, we're going to we're going to stop doing this, you know, we're going to start doing this. I mean, we know that Congress is a much more complicated process. It's like when people say Obama should have done this and he said he was going to do that. And I was kind of frustrated with him, too, because of all the claims he made. And when I went back and looked, he'd actually tried to implement a lot of these things and was blocked, you know, 175 times by Congress. So let's get to the point here. Health care is a huge issue in this particular debate, like this election, like, like they always have been because of Obama's disastrous health care bill that's going to destroy our country. So my thought was that health care is a preventative maintenance that helps people that need help. But at the same time, and, and, and a person could say that war is costing us way more money and we should be putting that into our own people. On the other hand, war, and I'm only saying this to be the devil's advocate, war can be preventative maintenance as well. In other words, if a group like ISIS is building up power in the Middle East, as they are, and I researched deeply to see exactly what was going on, what lands they had grabbed, and all this, um, it is an issue. It's an issue not just for us, but for the people down there, and we, as a military power, have some form of obligation to help out those who need it. But then there's the line drawn where people say, well, the U.S. should mind its own business. But the, then those same people will say, but it's a world, we're not countries. So it's kind of like sticking up for your neighbor. And then that gets into a whole bunch of other complicated issues. But uh, I read an article that said, for, for those who think that uh, military costs more than healthcare, you'd be surprised. So I spent an hour or so yesterday, I went through and I found all the statistics. I looked at the numbers from different angles to try to figure out what's really going on with healthcare. We do spend more on healthcare in 2011, let's say, than we did on military. Now, this leaves out black ops projects. This also leaves out diverted funds from other businesses or from other taxes that go to the military or to black ops. Um, this is only numbers here. 2011, we spent 664 billion on military, and we spent 900 billion on Medicare. Now that would lead a lot of people to say, holy crap, you know, we're spending way too much on health care. Sure, I can totally understand that. Three hundred billion of that went to pharma. Much more, I'm sure. But the issue is with pharma, not with health care. And this is this is this was the dis the here's the thing, okay, I'm just gonna read off the numbers and the facts because I can go on forever about this, but I'm just talking unless I'm reading facts. So, this one guy 
you know, these were some of the examples people gave. One guy went in for chest pains and he had to go into the ICU for three days. It turned out he was just having indigestion. $474,000 in doctor bills. It costs about $20,000 for private insurance for a group for a family of four in some of the uh, private insurance sectors, it is not uh, <laughs> it is not cheap. Um, between 2002 and 2011, that's in seven years, the cost doubled because of things like triple billing, overcharging. Each hospital has a set amount they charge for each thing, a band aid. It's $1.50 for one acetaminophen tablet, all of these things. And there's n absolutely no reason why they should be charging so much. So the issue is with the hospitals and with the doctors who are getting paid way too much. I should say the administrators, not the doctors, my apologies. Um, yeah, for example, they charge $18 for a diabetes AccuCheck strip in the hospital, where it costs 55 cents in the store. It's $283 for an x-ray versus what they actually pay is $20.44. So they're billing your insurance $300 for something that costs them $20. And all of this is publicly available. Um, the U.S. pays 50% more than the rest of the world for identical drugs from the same manufacturers. The lab work in 2010 won a hospital. It was $27 million for all their lab work as far as their receipts showed, but they charged and billed 283 million. Eleven times more. And if you want to explain to me how a hospital can charge eleven times more than something costs, I'd love to hear it. And that's what I was curious about too. Um, well, it turns out that... <laughs> okay, in the Bronx there's a non-profit hospital. There is the chief, chief executive there makes four million dollars a year. The financial, chief financial officer makes $3.2 million a year. The vice president makes $2.2 million a year. And just the head of the dental department makes $1.7 million a year. Okay? At Sloan Cancer Centers, or Sloan Kettering Cancer Centers, over 14 administrators are paid over half a million dollars a year. Six of them make over a million dollars. Now look. There is no administration job in the history of this goddamn world that is worth a million dollars a year or more. This is complete abuse. Administration is not life-threatening to the individual. It's not a risky job. It's not even a job that takes any actual education. You understand how to do paperwork. You know how to... But here's the thing, you know, CEOs, you know, sure, they make decisions. But what good does that do for... <laughs> the people who are suffering under the under the guise of uh, well our company's suffering we just can't afford it you know these things are frustrating it's like the bailout with the banks we bail them out with trillions and what happens they start giving million dollar bonuses to all their heads even after they were told not to so what are we supposed to do well we need the banks to pay us back but what's happened since 2008 has it got better? Have the interest rates been improved? No, because we work on a free market, a capitalist economy. And this is really the crux of my argument here. If you want to work in a capitalist society, and you want to have a capitalism as your your main, um, <laughs> I don't know, your system as capitalism, you assume that the free market's going to work itself out. And this is the argument many people have for free market. Yes, it does work itself out, only if all the conditions are properly met. Historically, those conditions have never been met. Um, I wrote down a couple more. I wrote, federal law, free market does not work when competition is illegal. That one was really, really hit home. A free market says that if I build a device that will help you with something, and somebody else builds a similar device, they can charge less, and then I'm required, and then I'm forced to charge less until it balances out to where the, the cost and profit are about what they should be. With pharmaceutical companies, these are the people who claim they need the money for research, but then they make this, quote, life-saving drug, they patent it, and the free market does not work because nobody else can make the drug. For what, seven, ten years till the patent wears off? That in itself kills millions of people every year that can't afford medicine. And I'm sorry, but 
this is the, the really the argument when we people talk about socialism and how we're moving into socialism and, and oh Bernie can't win he's just a socialist a socialist oh well, they're communist socialists and then you look at the rest of the world and many of the socialist you know countries it's not like they just fall apart I'm not saying we should be a socialist country because it doesn't work either socialism doesn't work because it does not allow individuals to shine through and make profit capitalism does not work if there aren't regulations in place to keep people from abusing others. But if you put regulations in place, then all of a sudden the government is in everybody's way. So groups like the Tea Party form because they want less regulations on companies so big business can make more profits. And the Tea Party was just a disinformation campaign by the 1%, okay? I'm sorry to say this, but anybody who fell for that one is uh, just doesn't get it. This is about taking regulations off of big business so they can make more. 60% of all bankruptcy cases in this country are related to medical bills, okay? Half, over half of all bankruptcies are related to medical bills. Nobody wants to file bankruptcy. People do it because they feel like they have no other choice. So along with those medical bills go all their credit card bills and everything else, and the credit card companies can charge more. I know people who file bankruptcy several times, and it just bothers me because it's like, you know, you get a credit card, you run it up, you buy a bunch of shit you don't need, and then you file bankruptcy. What the hell is that? You know, is that responsible living? No, because everybody f pays for that. The ambulance industry makes more than the movie industry, okay? Than Hollywood. The cost for an ambulance ride to the hospital is $1,000 minimum. I mean, this is, we talked about this 10 years ago. I don't know what it is today. I'm sure it's much more. And if you have other conditions, I'm sure every fucking Band-Aid costs $10. But this is the problem as I see it. It's not with who we're electing or who we're not electing. We know that they're a figurehead. So when I say that I support Bernie and that Trump's a chump, do I really think that either one of them can really choose anything for this country? Absolutely not. But they can put out suggestions that can hopefully be passed by Congress, but that requires intelligence. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, only one of them is intelligent. Bernie is a very intelligent man, but he's very intense, so a lot of people can't stand him, or for whatever reason. I don't have any illusions that he's perfect. He's a politician, and politicians are, you know, politicians. But I do have a hope that we can get past blaming individuals about, or rather saying, well, he's going to make our country socialist, or so-and-so is going to do this, when we know that everyone, at least most people, have the best interests of their country at heart, and at least they think they do. But without being provided the accurate information, you can't really make an adequate decision about anything. This is why people like Trump, he can sit there and, and spit all day about building a wall, or he wants to deport all 11, I mean 11 million Americans that are undocumented. He wants to deport everyone who picks your fruit, I mean, because he thinks that this is going to create more jobs, not realizing that this is going to take away from much of our economy. It's just one of those it's one of those things where a person thinks they're doing the right thing but they're not. And while well, everybody's talking about how they're gonna cut spending here, cut spending there, and, and how the military is this and that. It's the medical industry that's making off with a lot of our money people, as well as the military. If we could get both of those pinned down, then um, you know and, and, and I'm not gonna say that we should eliminate our military because that's ridiculous you have to be able to protect your homeland. That doesn't mean that you have to manufacture well, something like twenty billion dollars worth of <coughs> F-15 fighters or F-50 or whatever last year. I went down the entire list of what they declared to have spent money on in the military. A new nuclear submarine and a, you know, a bunch of planes and tanks and guns and this is great, but do we need all this? Do we need ground troop gear? Do we need to buy tanks anymore? it's almost become un-American to speak against the military because you're saying, oh, you know, these are our soldiers. It's like back during, you know, the, the Gulf War and people say, oh, you can't talk bad about them, you know, they're our soldiers. See, I'm not talking bad about the soldiers, I'm talking bad about the fucking idiots who put them there. Um, so anyway, getting off subject there. That's my healthcare um, information and uh, it's sad. It's really sad. Just remember that in the last, you know, in the last 15 years or so, healthcare costs have doubled. The hospitals are making way too much money off of you. So what do we do? We make regulations. 
this means more government, and this is where the problem lies. Nobody wants more government, but everybody wants equal treatment. It's just one of those catch-22s, man. I'm open to anybody else's ideas, you know. I, 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 I don't know what to say about it. You can't just force people to pay up and say, well, you're going to have a cap on how much you can make because that takes away from capitalism. We have to teach people to not want to be greedy, to do what's right. <laughs> that's, I don't know if that's ever going to happen until we figure out what we want.